Hello, we are the Blinders and you are watching Forge TV. So thanks guys for coming to sitting down with us and I'm going to gab before you show. Are you excited to be playing to a sold out venue? Yeah, yeah, it should be good into this tonight. It's uh, pretty much home turf or as close as we get to home turf in, in the form of Doncaster. Uh, this show, so yeah, it should be a good one. It should be a very, very good one. So if you, it's your tenth date of a UK tour. So is you, it really? Have you settled in nicely? Is it flown by? Is it dragged? It's yeah. I think we're we're having a good time, albeit sacrificing hygiene. But yeah, we're having a good time. Maybe smelling a bit stale, but who? Honestly, I can't smell anything from here. Right. So you're doing well. <laughs> we're okay. You're sat, you're sat the other <laughs> end. So yeah. I like the strategic yeah. position. <laughs> now I'm getting onto it now. So is it is it a bit mad to be playing your debut album night after night? Like, is it a bit crazy that once it was just a little thought in your heads and now you people are singing it back to you night after night? I suppose uh, when you put it like that, maybe. Um, but the way that we see it is we've been sat on this album now for... good. Well, it's been in the making of two years, but it, we've been sat on it for a good part of nine months in its finished product. It's like an actual um, baby then. No yeah, way. so it's a, it's like an actual baby. Yeah, that's, a, that's we've never thought of it like that before actually. Um, so yeah, it's a, yeah. She's a, is it a she or a he? It's a she in it. It's a she in it. Yeah, yeah. She's a good one. It's it's enjoyable to play. Any teething problems? No, not really. Um, we just I, I, I think much of the set is much of the same, but the format and the way that we perform uh, has changed a lot. Um, we we like to make it more of a show now in terms of just you know a, a, another gig that you'd see um, from any band. So um, yeah, I don't I don't think there's much more to say about it other than that. Just sort of take your inspiration from other artists of putting it more like a show. Like we were chatting about Roger Waters before this. I suppose it's more of you want someone leaving with the feel that they've saw uh, like a performance from start to finish. I suppose getting that message across. Definitely. I mean, just speaking about then, you so mentioned the pig was the first thing you mentioned, you know, or when you see the war, for example, you know, the visuals are almost the first thing you you think of, you know, despite the fact that, you know, you've seen these songs played. So I think that's, you know, something to, something to take away, you know. Um, and there's no reason you can't watch those, you know, those those shows that the likes of Waters do and try and downsize them almost and try and take the same sort of ethos and put them into a smaller venue, you know. Um, very much as suppose as what Bowie did with Ziggy. That kind of that kind it's of an idea. Act more it's than a gig, definitely, suppose, yeah, it? yeah. It's an, it's, it's, it's an experience, you know. And I think because we've sort of did the dystopian literature in the album, you know, that we want to sort of transfer that to the live show as well. So, talking about sort of the look of things, talk us through the album artwork for Columbia. Where was where did the process begin? Was there a reason for what you did, or was it just like you know what? Let's smother this on and take a picture. Uh, yeah. So the uh, like many things that often involve concepts. Our concept came after we'd sort of written the majority of the album. Um, but the the face paint had always been there for uh, maybe two years or so. Hence why Matt talks about how this whole album, this whole concept has been in the making for you know probably two years rather than nine months. Um, but yeah, we, we wanted something that would capture what we'd been doing as a band uh, in this state of mind. Uh, and also something that would you know, show the quite you know stark brutality of uh, you know the 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 atmosphere that we've tried to create on the album uh, with with a lot of the songs on there. Um, so we have a very good friend called Sam Croson who does the majority of our artwork, and yeah, he's uh, he just visualizes and says, yeah, we just need a photo of you with your face paint on, and I'll I'll spruce it up for you. Yeah, <laughs> he's a fourth member. He's he is very much fourth he's member. He's an honorary member. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So being from Doncaster, were you quite clued up on Sheffield music scene when you were younger? Was it maybe something that may have influenced you to pick up pieces and start doing music? Or was it just something that came natural growing up? We we got into music through, I mean, your dad used to take you to gigs, didn't he? Um, so it wasn't necessarily the sort of thing like we'd come and travel to Sheffield for the music scene. It was more of a it was always there. come and see this. But, you know, so I, I, I don't know. We've not really thought about that. Sheffield really, especially by ourselves. Um, but yeah, obviously I'm in the sort of the Sheffield scene on you do obviously the Art of Monkeys are the the standout band I suppose and obviously it was the big influence for us sort of growing up and probably the reason we all picked up guitars and drumsticks etc. Um 
but yeah, I think we've sort of always taken influence on, you know, further afield, I suppose. And like I say, although it's on our doorstep, I don't think it was a direct or, you know, an, an ever-present influence. You know? yeah. yeah, like you said, it just kind of happens when you turn 16, 17. Going to, was it enemy or? It was, yeah. We went, we went to see um, the Fat White Family. Uh, it was Slaves and Palmer Violets. And then... 16, 17? It was, six, it was 16 years old. And uh, Amazing Snakeheads, who Dale Barkley, the frontman, recently passed away, which is... You know, like, uh, you know, uh, it's it's fucking shit because he was uh, he was fantastic, and they split up on the night that we was meant to see them in Sheffield yeah. on the Enemy oh tour, God. so we never got to see the Amazing Snakeheads. But they influenced us massively for this first album. Uh, we did, however, get to see And Yet It Moves, which was his side project. So, yeah, rest easy, Dale. You know, he's uh, he's a big influence on us. So. Well, popping on to your influ influences, actually, what I grasp from sort of seeing what you do and listening to what you do, that you definitely have your own sure sound. I feel like when you come on what Radio X and there's, or you're listening in the car and you think, you know what, there's not, in my knowledge, I couldn't really put a set person that who you sound like, which I think is really interesting. But I was wondering, is it a mix of influences that have sort of got you to that place? Or do, do would you say it's completely off your own back or like a sort of mix of the two? No, I don't think we can uh, sort of boast that we're unique at all um, in any sense. Actually, I think we 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 magpie a lot of things, and um, you know, we, I think we, the guitar tone comes from the witches. You know, the uh, the choruses come from cabbage. Um, you know, that sort of thing. It's, it's more so taking inspiration from each different thing and putting it into one instead and of just a direct copy. Your own bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I think the. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Um, uh, yeah, we just we've got such an eclectic music taste between us that that all just naturally leaks into whatever we're doing. Um, more so now that we're doing some stuff with writing the second album, um, that you know it, it, that's coming into part a lot more, and it, it almost like there's a split between you know who's wrote that song and know who's wrote that song, as opposed to it being all this uh, amalgamation, if you like. Before I stop um, basically putting you on the spot and asking you a load of questions, That's I'm going to throw one to you. Doing now, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> it's basically just five minutes of me just like shouting things and then you're just like, yes. And then you ah. sort of give us a little example. Yeah, though. Okay. Um, I've got a question for you. Is if you, well, each of you individually, if you could play a gig any year, any venue, whether you'd go back to CBGB's days, whether it'd be stuff like the Cavern, the Hacienda, what would be your dream? sort of place and and time oh, in terms of gig probably um, woodstock santana that'd be good wouldn't it to go and see it no play it play it yeah what like just be one of be one, one of santana so you could just actually. get like if you could just be like slotted in somewhere yeah. on a set list at a year in a place woodstock. i know this is very remember, this is getting specific now we're getting nitty-gritty at the end can we can we take this band can we like time travel with this band yeah. to something. So yeah. like oh, you guys right. just oh, get right. plunked yeah. in on a year. You wanted to be a part of Santana then, didn't you? Well, I thought, yeah. Are you jumping not. bands already? <laughs> <laughs> no, all right. I was same same place in Woodstock. No, just fuck off. We'd fuck get off. booed. I reckon you'd get booed. Awesome. I'd get booed. <laughs> CBGBC. Great, you know, on the same bill as you'd be on CBBS, mate. <laughs> 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 yeah, the same. You know, Patty Smith bill that S. I think that'd suit us down to the grounds. Yeah. I, I I concur. So not not CBBS. You won't be seen. Oh, you might you might be on CBBS. You, you, I reckon you'd be a good presenter on CBBS. <laughs> you'd fluff so. I don't. Yeah. Lines, yeah, you'd fluff I all you like. Cry. <laughs> I think when you drop the f bomb on screen, then maybe they'd ask yeah, you to. That, that, uh, I do apologise. Yeah, so. I think maybe that alarm means this is over. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting kicked out. CBBS police have to chaz. Yeah. You know the BBC. Are, they're at, they're in the building. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Much. Cheers, I was cheers. gonna cheer you for the microphone, maybe that's health and safety. No. Nah, <laughs> nah, we don't do health and safety. Come on. Have a great gig tonight. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you.